Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. You can follow us everywhere at winningcureseverything.com. Go check it out for yourself. We're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Twitter, Facebook, you name it, we're there. Go check it out. Uh, obviously, if you're watching the video, it's all going to be down at the bottom. It'll come across eventually. Go check it out. We appreciate your support. If you are listening on the podcast, hit subscribe. Leave us a nice five-star review. We would appreciate all of that. It helps out with rankings. It helps other people hear the podcast, etc. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe again. Leave some nice comments. Tell us what we got right, what we got wrong, where you agree with us, where you don't, etc. Uh, if you're going to trash talk, be able to take it. That's all I'm going to say. And then we'll go from there. Today, we're discussing the SEC West. And this show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six absolutely incredible sports books. They're all wonderful. You can find more information about them over at tunicatravel.com. You ready to fire in? Yes, sir. This is a big one. This is a big one. It may run a little long, and that's okay. I'm good with it. Um, we're going to start with the Alabama Crimson Tide. 14-1 last year. 8-0 in the conference. 9-0 if you count the SEC title game. Uh, but the last one was a doozy. Returning starters, they got six back on offense, seven back on defense. Experience is number 86 returning nationally, number nine in the conference. Uh, but that doesn't seem to matter with this team for whatever reason. The over-under, now these were the opening lines, like the opening at Caesars, whatever it was. Um, over 11 and a half was plus 250. And the under was minus 300. So it was like, all right, well, you got big juice on 11 and 1. And you got, like, you're giving up a bunch on 11 and 1. That's right. But you gain a lot if they go 12 and 0 again. That's pretty crazy. Nick Saban, 146 and 21 in 12 years at Alabama. He brings in offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian and defensive coordinator Pete Golding was promoted uh, on the team. He was the co defensive coordinator anyway last year. Uh, but now he is the sole one. Tosh LaFoy goes to the NFL. Uh, the offensive coordinator, Mike Loxley, goes to Maryland. Uh, they've got a total of seven new assistants. And I did not write my notes down. I think it was like they've had 35 assistants in the past like six years. I mean, it's just, it's absurd. Um, Tua, Tonga Valoa, and the entire wide receiver core returns. Running backs, Najee Harris and Brian Robinson. They're replacing uh, three offensive linemen and a tight end. Uh, they lost some pretty good tight ends. Can LeBron Ray or Fedarian Mathis replace Kenan Williams? That is the question for the defense. Uh, the secondary is going to be much more experienced this year. They started some young guys, and it bit them in the national championship game. There are always holes to fill with this team, but this program is, and they have been for a while, they reload as opposed to rebuild. Uh, can they keep building after having... Uh, here we go. 28 different assistants since 2015. Can they keep going at this pace? I don't know the answer to that. I've got them at 12-0. and 0. Um, You know, I, the schedule is pretty light this year. They yep. get LSU at home. They've got to play at Auburn. they got to play at Texas A&M. they got to play at South Carolina. Uh, but non-conference, they've got Duke, New Mexico State, Southern Miss, and Western Carolina. They play at Mississippi State. Uh, they've got Tennessee, Arkansas, Ole Miss at home. It's, you know, it, you, you don't see a lot of a lot of potential landmines. You only got three games that matter on the whole schedule. So, at A&M, you could absolutely lose that, but that is after a bye week. You've got LSU at home, again, after a bye week. And you've got at Auburn the week after you play Western Carolina. Uh, at Mississippi State, depending on what Tommy Stevens is. Yeah, we need to see State. This State team's going to look way vastly different, different. Yeah. Than, than what last year's State team looked, or any team that we've seen from State in the last decade. Yeah. Uh, tell me your thoughts. I mean, I, I've, I've got them 12-0. and 0, I've got them 8-0. Uh, I, I know this is going to sound crazy. I know this is going to sound like it's hater. It's really, really not. 
I got them 10 and two, and I have them 10 and two for a very specific reason. I think that all of the player turnover and all of the coaching turnover at some point in time will come back to bite you. Yeah. And 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 I think I know you just reload at, at Alabama and, and not, you know, and not rebuild. I'm not saying a 10 and 2 is not a rebuilding year. I think It would be a disappointment for this team. No doubt. No doubt. Um, and I, that's what's crazy. They they have not won less than 11 games in the regular season since 2010. Yeah. LSU hasn't beaten Alabama in a long time and they don't beat them often. But when they have beat them, they've, they've beaten them at Alabama. Yeah. So that that's not it's not impossible. I think A and M is going to be the the class of this conference and and a surprise team this year. Maybe not really a surprise team, but I think they're going to be really good. I think their schedule is just unbelievably hard, but I think they're going to be an exceptional team going to A and M. I think both teams will be undefeated for that game. A and M's got a bow just before that game as well, so it's not like Alabama has any kind of distinctive advantage. Now A and M has got uh, Arkansas the week before that. I'm looking at it right here. A and M has a bye week and then Alabama, bye week and then A and M. I don't know what you looked at, but they have Arkansas, then a bye week, then Alabama. Interesting. So That's, mine has the bye so week I don't, on October. 12th. I, I don't. I don't know that 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 changes much, and. I like a and I think they could lose that game. I think they could lose that Auburn game easily because it's at Auburn, and that is a big rivalry. We've seen average Auburn teams beat Bama. We've, we've seen them get rolled by Bama. I actually think this Auburn team is going to be pretty good. So yeah. I think 10-2, and two, and I don't know that that has anything to do with much other than Alabama has a lot of unknowns. We all assume that they're all studs, but yeah. they're still unknown. They're unproven. And then I'm going to tell you one guy that's not going to scare me at all. Tua Tungavalo is incredible. Judy might be the best player in all of college football. Okay? Yeah. You, you could easily have the number one and number two picks in the NFL draft on the same side of the ball. But Steve Sarkeesian ain't scaring a damn person. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I You're think right. that is a mistake hire. Now, they could be the best offense in the world, and they could lose zero games. I don't know that Sarkeesian should get credit for that. I think everybody who sat in that chair has done well. Yeah. I think if they go 10-2, and two, I think a lot of that has Sark's name all over it. Okay, I can believe that. I, you, you've got an OC now that I firmly believe is more of a guy who, who I don't trust at a job than I do, which... Rarely happens with Nick. Yeah. And then and then there's just so much other transitioning and turnover. What you got going for you is Nick's never going to let the defense ever struggle. They're, yeah. they're going to be the most prepared defense in all of college football. Every game they play, they're not going to be outcoached by anybody. And you have, if he's not the best quarterback in all of football, he's the second best quarterback in all of college football. Yeah. And you you – you have in my eyes, who I think is probably the best receiver in football and yeah. maybe the best college player in football. Yeah. The, those things, and then the stable of running backs that are going to replace the running backs that you lost, it's just a different name every year. New Jersey, run out there, blow through guys. That stuff, that stuff's just happening. I think Auburn's going to be able, they're not going to be afraid of you. LSU's not going to be afraid yeah. of you. AM's not going to be afraid of you. Winning all of those games, I just think there's going to be a mistake somewhere. I can understand it. I can understand it. That's all. That's all. I, not a knock. I know how them people are going to come at me. They hadn't lost two games in God knows how long. 2010. I just, I just think at some point in time, you, you can't just keep taking bricks out of the out of the castle and expect it to stand forever. Yeah. Okay. And, and ten and two is not falling to six and six. No, 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 no. You no. know, it's uh, ten and two still very respectable but would be a disappointment for this oh, program yes. right now. Uh, let's move on. Arkansas. The Arkansas Razorbacks. 2-10 and 10 last year. 0-8 in the conference. Returning starters, they got six back on offense, five back on defense experience-wise. Returning number 20 in the, in the country, number 14 in the conference. Maybe that's a good thing. Possibly a good thing. Five and a half is the over-under. Over is plus 120. Under is minus 300. So Vegas expects that they are going to go under this. 
Uh, and I, I tend to agree, but we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm, I'm going to bet I'm gonna bet five and a half is not the number very long. No. Uh, head coach Chad Morris, 16 and 32 in four years as a head coach. Uh, he is known for offense, but they had the number 118 total offense last year. Both of their quarterbacks are gone. So SMU transfer quarterback Ben Hicks is the favorite to start, but don't forget uh, Texas A&M transfer Matt Starkle is now on campus. He could push. Uh, but Ben Hicks was with Morris at SMU. He's a senior, et cetera. Offensive line has got to improve to allow their game plan to work. They've they only got bad. two starters back. They were bad. Yeah, they were really bad. Um, but the, the young guys have got to improve quickly. That's right. Uh, period. Middle linebacker Dejon Harris leads the defense. He had 118 tackles. That was third in the SEC last year. Uh, defensive line and edge are both good. The secondary is really thin for John Chavis, which means... Maybe he's not able to do exactly what he wants to do. They went from a downhill offense to the spread, and the personnel just didn't fit, and they still really don't fit. Uh, it's going to take a bit to reteam or to rebuild this team. The non-conference this year, pretty easy. That right. that's why the number is as high as it is. Uh, their non-conference slate: Western Kentucky, San Jose State, Colorado State, Portland State. Like that's four wins that. Last year, we're not even a guarantee, right? Because they, right. they got smoked at home by North Texas, and they went on the road and lost to Colorado State. Uh, but I think that this year, with a little more familiarity at the quarterback position, they'll be able to get those wins done. However, I have got them 0-8 in the SEC again. Me too. Uh, I've got them 4-8 overall. You got the same thing? Same thing. Uh, I, I'm just not a huge Chad Morris believer. I don't... Yes, maybe it was time for Bielema to be gone at Arkansas. He was not able to get the results that they were expecting from there. They were expecting national titles. But but they went from a spread team with Petrino. To a power run to team. To a power run team that, that was still trying to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They were looking to uh, not reinvent the offense, but do more than just be a downhill running team. We, we, had, a, we had a clash in, in philosophies on the school, the athletic director, and the the people who run the program want a Petrino type offense. Yeah, but they hired Brett Bieleman, and they were wanting to force a square peg into a round hole. I didn't understand that. Yeah, um, let this guy do what he does, which is build freakishly big athletic offensive linemen and and, and bring put, in running backs. Put yeah, put four or five hundred yards on the ground against people. Yeah. It keeps the defense off the field. You can pay more of an aggressive defense. I like that style of ball. I was yeah. always a Brett Bielman fan. Um, he underperformed, but I think a lot of that is because his hands were tied. I think they were trying to push this. You've got to throw it more. Um, and I don't know that's what he wanted to do. This is the example of why I'm afraid when you take a young coach, or even not a young coach, but a coach at a lower tier program, bring them to the Power Five, and I don't like that they bring everybody with them. Because if those guys were coordinators that were good enough to beat the well, Power no, Five they, level, they would have gotten jobs before. He did it. He did hire Chavis on the defense. Well, like this he, year. He thought, well, no, 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 he's had Chavis. Well, yeah, like no, he had Chavis last year. That's right. Oh, yeah, um, Chavis the, came in. But the deal year. is, like, on offense, he thought, my offense is going to work anywhere. Um, and it might. But 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 there's so much more than just two coordinators that run things. Yeah. All of your position coaches, those guys help recruit. Those guys bring good talent. It, and you you need somebody who knows the lay of the land. Maybe they've got some guys from Arkansas that are on that program. I just don't know who yeah, they but, are. But you can't win with just talent from Arkansas. you got to be able to go into Missouri, into Texas, into Louisiana. Louisiana, yeah, like, that's right. And get guys. And they hadn't been able to do that yet. Um, you know, I... I just I'm not a big Chad Morris believer. I'm like not he, either. Three of his four years, he has been uh, he's had a, a losing record, and they hired him from SMU off of a seven and five season, where they probably should have been a little bit better. But the, he got hired because of what he did at Clemson. That's right. You know, and and he was at Clemson before they started winning national championships. I was just about to say that. Like he he did help build that offense. And now remember, he was a high school coach before that. But I I just I don't know. Chad Morris has not proven to me that he can be a successful big-time head coach. He had never been a college coach right. before before he took the SMU job. So, and he had never been even a college assistant before he went to Clemson. 
but he was able to transition them into more of a spread, more up-tempo type thing. And, I mean, how many people have caught up to what he is doing? Well, everybody's the, doing it now. That's, that's the thing, right? He wasn't so, anything, He was something different back then. And now, eight years later, the whole, the whole everybody knows changed. how to stop it. Like, that's it, right. Like Alabama in 2011 could not keep up with, you know, up tempo teams, and now Alabama is an up tempo team. That's right. Like that's just the way the it game goes. has evolved. Yes, and and I don't know that Chad Morris has enough innovation in him to be able to make this a really successful team. Uh, and obviously, he can prove me wrong. Oh yeah. And Arkansas fans, I'm sure, will come out and say that, but. I, at I this don't know, point, man. I mean, I, I'm, we, we live close to Arkansas, and there's a lot of Arkansas people around yeah. here. For those that don't know, we're in Memphis. Yeah. So like, and, we, and so we, like, I, I'm surrounded with a lot of Arkansas people. They love their school. They love their program. And last but, year... But like, none it, of them are so... They, they also saw last year as a, a year zero. But before the season, they were hyped up because Chad Morris always bringing this spread. True. We're going to... That's right. You know, we, we're going to a bowl game. We're doing all this. I, and I, it think, just, I think they could see a six and six year... With wins against Kentucky and Ole Miss, maybe, and and now you're not in the cellar of the SEC and all this other stuff. I don't see that. Well, I mean, you, you, the bad thing, like your home schedule, like because I don't think you're going to win at LSU. You're not going to win at Alabama. A uh, and M has beaten you, even when you were good, has beaten you every year. Well, there's just different level of talent. Yeah, and and that's the thing. So they play at Kentucky. Uh, they got Mississippi State coming in, um, which, I mean, they. Maybe they catch Mississippi State sleeping. Maybe. At, you and know. I'd be shocked if State falls that far. Um, I think State's going to step back a little bit, but I don't think they're going to fall that far. No. And uh, then you've got Arkansas would just have to be substantially better than – we'll just have to be wrong on Arkansas. Yeah. If if they beat State, we, we're just wrong Yeah. about who they are yeah. and their identity. And that's okay. That's but, the the over-under seemed really high at five and a half. Yes. I mean, we both got I, them at four and eight. I was about to say yes. I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked if they get six. If if they go two straight years with no SEC wins. That's, I'm that, wondering how short the leash is. That's exactly what I was going to say. Well, because last year not we all assumed. No, yeah, I'm going to say he's on the cheap. Last year we all assumed was a year zero. Yeah. And if that's a year zero, this is year one. You got to understand you still still got a lot of growing to do. Yeah. Next year, you don't win a you don't win a conference game in two years. Next year, you got to be a whole lot better than six yeah. and six. Yeah. Like we got to go from four and eight all the way to you know eight, eight and, four. and four. I mean, you got to flip this thing. I mean, going from two and ten to four and eight, like that's an improvement. But true, how much? But I think you improved that because you changed the schedule. Yeah. You didn't really prove it. You just moved the goal line closer. Yeah. Because you're not playing North Texas this year, that's and right. you're getting that revenge against Colorado State, and that's they're coming to Arkansas. Good gracious! All right, next up, the Auburn Tigers. We may see this differently. I don't. We're going to see this a lot differently because but, you hate this team. That's not necessarily well. Okay, that is true, but uh, you know, let's let's just give the the tail of the tape. Eight and five last year, three and five in conference. Returning starters, they've got six on offense, seven on defense. Experience-wise, number 58 in the country uh, in returning experience, number 6 in the conference. Their over-under is 8. The over is minus 130. The under is plus 110. That means Vegas thinks it's more likely they hit 9 than 7 wins. The quarterback is down to redshirt freshman Joey Gatewood or true freshman Bo Nix. Gus Malzahn, 53-27 and in 6 years as the head coach. He is back to calling plays. He hired Memphis offensive coordinator Kenny Dillingham to kind of step in and help help run more up tempo kind of stuff. Uh, Kenny Dillingham will not be calling plays; that'll be no. Gus's job. But as far as creating a game plan, obviously Dillingham was around Mike Norvell. You know that's that's a good thing, right? Um, look, like I said, quarterback down to a redshirt freshman and a freshman, neither of which has taken a college snap. Uh, all five offensive linemen return, but they were inconsistent at best. Uh, running back Booby Whitlow, he he could absolutely be a star. He can be a star. Uh, defensive line is legit, uh, probably one of the best in the conference, if not the nation. Uh, I don't know about the best in the nation. Like I, I don't know who. No, would maybe not that. number one, but they're but, in the conversation. Yeah, they're they're in the conversation for that. The entire secondary is back for the number fourteen scoring defense. They do lose all three linebackers. Uh, how much depth does this team actually have? 
They play six of the top 13 teams in the just recently released uh, coaches poll. With the school president gone, maybe Malzahn does not have that security blanket that he had before. And that could be an issue. This schedule is really, really difficult. I've got them at seven and five. I've got them four and four in the conference, but I've got them losing to Oregon. Uh, Oregon returns a lot of experience. Like they're, I think they're number one in the country, aren't they? Yeah, they're they're um, up there. Or they're, 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 they're not they're number top one. ten. Yeah, they're really um, high. And they return a senior quarterback. They got like all this different stuff. But who was supposed to be a top five NFL draft pick? Um, now he was hurt for a portion of last season, but either way, I've got him losing to Oregon because you got a guy coming in taking his first college snaps against a team that I think is going to be pretty good in yeah. Oregon. Uh, a win over Tulane, a win over Kent State, kind of turns things around. Then you go to Texas A&M. And I've got them losing to Texas A&M, but then I've got them beating Mississippi State at home and then a win at Florida, right? So even if they beat Texas A&M, I could totally see them losing to either State or Florida, right? So that's another loss. I've got a win at Arkansas, but then I've got them losing to LSU. Like, that's on the road. That's in Baton Rouge. I think LSU gets them again this year. A win over Ole Miss, and then I've got them losing to Georgia, beating Samford, and a loss to Alabama. And both of those are at home, and they could absolutely turn things around. If they've got some momentum, they could win those games. But at Auburn, if you have already lost like three games by the time you get to that point in the season, and the other team's got more to play for, yeah, sometimes the crowd isn't as into those games. So I've got them seven and five, four and four. What uh, what have you got, Auburn? I got them ten and two, and I just we just disagree. We just disagree that's, that's, for the guy who has given home field advantage an extreme plus all the way through all 125 teams that we've done so far. Here, you take home field advantage, just throw it away. Just say it doesn't matter. Just doesn't hey, matter. Yeah, but we're talking about Georgia and Alabama. Like I'm not. These are two teams that they beat all the time. Just because they're really good teams doesn't mean that Georgia, that Auburn just loses these teams, loses these games. Two years ago okay. at home, they beat the hell out of Georgia. Controlled every aspect of the Agreed. game from start to finish. Kirby Smart folds like a cheap suit every time a little bit of heat hits his bottom. Yeah. Like, why do we think that's going to change? Uh, because I don't think this team is as good as that team was. I don't know. Th- I don't know that they have to be. I, I I have them winning against Oregon because while I think Oregon is a really good team, really good, I think Oregon is still have a little bit of ways to go. I think SEC talent is still a thing. I okay. I think the yeah. fourth or fifth best team in the SEC is a lot better than the best team in the Pac-12. I could be wrong, and it could just be complete bias. You're one of these guys where I got to see it before I rank it. If it's any other big SEC team, you give them the win because you know that SEC talent is just better. And while you might be average in the SEC, you're still better than most of the other teams in the country. I, okay? I, so, no, here's the deal, though. But you know that's true. You, no, know I, that, you know that it's absolutely true. If this was Florida playing them, you would have Florida having that nod, and you'd use that as over that Oregon. Argument. Yes. I, see, yeah. I don't think so. Remember, I've got Oregon going eleven and one this year. I know you do. Like, I think Oregon's going to be really, really good. They've got a, a a really good quarterback and a whole wealth of really good experience. And I know Mario Cristobal is a tough, tough coach. He understands how to coach in the SEC. That offense is good at Oregon. That offense won't play a defensive line that is going to beat them up physically early. And that here's the deal. Because they you know they that. won't have to put up a ton of points to be able to win this game because I don't think that Auburn's offense look I've already talked about the, the quarterbacks. But the skill it, it players is, it is very other strange than Booby Whitlow that that high ranked quarterbacks don't start. We have we see freshmen come into this league all the time, all the time and take over teams. And do really well if they're highly recruited. At one point in time, Fromm was a freshman quarterback. And he took a job from the number one quarterback in the SEC at that time. It, he it, Jacob Eason was never the number one quarterback in the SEC. Who was that year? But Because uh, it was just two years ago. Uh, man, I have no idea. It, it, it wasn't I mean, Jalen Hurd. Well, Jalen Hurts was the offensive player of the year in 2016. I, I understand um, that. That's because... But Jacob That's Eason was not Alabama like did. Jacob Eason's only year starting was he went like eight and five. 
like in his first year. But what I'm saying like, is we see, and we saw him come in his freshman year. We see freshmen take over teams all the time. I, I'm and, with we, you. and we never question them. We just assume this, the, especially with a, an offensive minded coach that's going to coach the quarterback too. Like, this is what he does. Like, the fact that these guys have never <laughs> taken a snap, you just work under something, they're just going to be awful. And they're not going to they're they're gonna gonna be, be good at all. I'm not saying he's going to be awful. They've got all I'm the potentials to be really good. They are playing six top 13 teams, I, and, and they play right. the number one and the number three teams at home late in the season. But those teams are one and like, three today. I, I'm, things are one and three today. I understand. So that. if they if they went if they go one and one in that if they go one and one in that then I'm then I'm down to what nine and three. Well, at that point, for me, you would be eight and four. So, but if if they beat Oregon, that puts them at nine and three. But then you've got at Texas A and M at LSU. I don't so think what, they win those games. Who, what what losses? because Auburn hasn't Auburn doesn't travel well. They that their road games are when they get beat. So you think they beat Georgia and Alabama? I, that's why I have it right now because okay. I don't think they're scared of those teams. But here's the thing: this this is one of those things where I I make a schedule, okay, and I'm just picking a game. I think they're going to finish ten and two. I think if they go one and one there, they're going to go one and one somewhere else. Okay, no, I'm, okay. That okay. means that means that they could easily win one of those LSU A and M games. Okay, that may, I mean that makes sense. But that makes sense. If they finish nine and three, would I be surprised? No. If they finish seven and five, I'd be completely surprised. There's just no way that's happening. If they're over under is eight, you'd yes, be surprised at, I do. at seven to five. That's why I think it's going over. I I get to okay. bet these things. I see it different than Vegas. You're you're a you are a believer in Gus Malzahn. In Gus Malzahn I and am, his play I, calling. I believe but but I believe in him even when he was I think he's a good head coach. Okay. I do think that Auburn fans and their their administration has unrealistic expectations all the time. Tell me this. Tell me this. Even with as much money as is left on his contract, if they are seven and five after the season, he doesn't survive. Okay. I, here's the thing. I don't know that that's an issue. I think he calls his agent. I think he finds him another job, and he just leaves. Okay. I can see well, that. Well, no, that's not true. He's got too much money on the table. He gonna make him fire him. Yeah. That's. I, I, I apologize. You don't ever leave that much money aside. I don't care what the situation is. No. It, it's all guaranteed money. But so I don't think that's. I don't think that's happening. I do think that Auburn is getting a little more realistic. At times, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're coming. It. Maybe the reason their athletic department, or the, the president, is gone is because unrealistic expectations. Because when you have unrealistic expectations, you I can't even talk right. I don't, I don't think through. that's why the president's. Gone. But but when you but but what I'm saying is is when those things happen, you have inconsistencies. You have teams where you're competing for national championships, and then the next year you're eight and four, yeah. and then you're doing this and you're doing this because there's no consistency. And I think at some point in time, people have to realize that while what Nick Saban has done and what Dabo Sweeney has done is amazing, it is not your God-given birthright to win 10, 11 games every year and to compete for a national championship. So if you do it every two or three years, the fan base should be ecstatic and get the hell over the other years. It's part of building a program with 18 and 19-year-old kids. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay. Okay. I think they're 10 and 2. I think they're really good, and I believe in Gus Malzahn. I could be wrong. And you're right. The fact that I think they're going to – I know we've got to get over this, but the fact that I think they're going to beat Georgia and Alabama, probably not going to happen. It's just the way I wrote it on their sheet. They go into Baton Rouge and beat the hell out of LSU. I, you know, it could happen. But the homer in me says that ain't happening. So I move on. There you go. And we will move on. <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's all good. We we're three teams in, and we're already on 30 minutes here. <laughs> well, this was going to be a big one. This is a big one. I, I told this you to get through the one. intro fast. Now let's go through another big one. The LSU Tigers. 10-3 and three last year, 5-3, and three, a very unexpected 10-3. and three. Uh, Returning starters, 7 back on offense, 8 back on defense. Experience, number 19 in the country. Returning, number 1 in the conference. That is a far cry from last year when they were, like, dead last in the conference. Uh, Ed Orgeron, 25 and 9, two plus years at the helm. He hired Joe Brady, a 27 year old offensive assistant for the Saints, as their passing game coordinator. Offensive coordinator Steve Insminger uh, impressed people last year, but their total offense has declined every year since 2015. They were number 39 in 2015, uh, number 
59 and 16, number 17, uh, in 2017, number 54, but the total yardage actually declined. Even though they moved up in the rankings, they still declined. And uh, they were number 69 in 2018. Four out of five offensive linemen back. Uh, their freshman running back, John Emery, could play quickly. That kid is unreal. Uh, quarterback Joe Burrow, like, rallied the team last year. That he, is a leader. Yeah, he's he's just a leader. Uh, top 25 defense every year, starting back in 2010. Uh, they had the number 25 total defense last year. Ton of experience returning on D. I mean, defensive end, Rashard Lawrence, and strong safety, Grant Delpit. Uh, they are back, and they are legit. Absolutely legit. Uh, just NFL talent, right? Freshman cornerback, Derek Stingley, he could possibly start immediately, even over some of these other guys. He is that good. He's really good. Uh, they've got a rough non-conference, but this may be their best chance to catch Alabama, and that's really what it's all about with this that's team, it. right? Um, how is the RPO going to look with this team, with Joe Brady and that, that whole new passing thing? Um, is Joe Burrow the guy that started last year averaging about 50% completion rate, or is he the guy that, after the Alabama game, averaged like 67% completion rate? So, like, I could, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to this team for a minute. Um, these are my guys. <laughs> a lot of homerism here. I don't know how to do this. But I can answer why the, the offense went down in production every year. Yeah. For the last four years. It, is, it has been very clear. It has nothing to do with any talent anywhere or coaching anywhere except for, and Orgeron called it out, and a lot of people gave him crap because he said he threw his players under the bus. No, he's just speaking truth to what he sees on the tape. And it's all because the offensive line just wasn't big enough, strong enough, fast enough to hang with the top echelon teams. They couldn't hang long enough with A&M. They, couldn't, they can't hang with Alabama. It's why they continue to lose that game, and it's strictly offensive line play. I think this offensive line is way better than they have been the last couple of years. Now, they are bringing yes. four of those five guys back. They weren't big enough and strong enough last year to hold Alabama's defensive front, but I also think Alabama did lose some big NFL guys. Hopefully, they just don't replace them. with what They're going to be freshmen that I will replace them with or sophomores, and maybe they're not as big or as strong as they will be one day. And, and I think this team is crazy talented. Joe Burrow... Joe Burrow might be the best quarterback that I've seen at LSU in my lifetime because we just don't have a lot of good quarterbacks. This guy is an absolute leader. I don't know that there's any way to measure that other than just watch how the team responds to him. He's a coach's kid, and you can tell. Um, I think whatever they show him to do and whatever they do with this offense that I've been working on, instituting RPOs, whatever, he's going He's going to learn it. Yeah. Not, you're not going to beat him between the ears. Yeah. You could beat him because of talent, because there's there's 12 other quarterbacks in the conference that are going to be more talented than him. Right. But right. but you're not going to beat him without working him, and you're not going to beat him with, with, with him making mistakes and the talent around him. Pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the most loaded LSU teams. I tried going into it thinking I'm not going to have them better than 9-3 and three because I just think – that's a realistic goal that I would be happy with when the season started. I'm looking at this thing. I want to write 12 and 0. Never going to do that. I'm just not. I, I know. I don't think that's realistic. But I think 10 and 2, 11 and 1 is. I've got them at 10 and 2. Um, now I've got a loss at Mississippi State, but I've got a win over Auburn, over Florida, that's just over Texas like, A&M. The the. Uh, that like L at, Auburn's going to lose both their home games, but LSU's going to lose his road game to Mississippi State. Well, here's here's the reason why. To, I think to an unproven Joe Moorhead that, that this state team has lost more talent than it's ever had in the history of Mississippi State. The reason being... We're going to lose that game because it's on the road. That no, makes I sense. Think I, we talked before about how kids go up and down, etc. Uh, I think LSU is going to win at Texas... I, I've got that, you know. I've got them at sitting at six and zero before Mississippi State. The issue is they play Florida at home the week before Mississippi State, and I think that they are going to be so amped up for that Florida game because they have lost to Florida now what two years in a row. Yep. 
Um, or is it more than that? Is it three no, years? No, I don't know the three. I think it's two. It, either way, they've lost to him the last two years, and this rivalry has gotten much more intense. Oh, no, it's a rivalry. It, There's it no is, doubt. It is a real thing. Ever since, like, the hurricane game that had to be made up and everything, it, it has really become a problem. And I, I think they will be so amped up and so high for that game that it will be tough to come back the next week. Um, I think that Mississippi State loses at Tennessee the week before that LSU game, and I think they come back super high. So you've got a shifting there, right? So that's why I think that State could win. But would it surprise me if they beat State and lose to Auburn? No. Would it surprise me if they beat State and lose to Florida? No. Would it surprise me if they beat State and lose at Texas? What if like, they beat State and beat those other teams too? That That's totally reasonable. I could see them going 11-1. Like, I've got them losing at Alabama, but everything else is on the table. Like, I, I've just got them at 10-2. I, I will tell I'm you. I'm not an Ezra <clears throat> like, uh, believer as of yet, but after last year, like, he's got me coming around. All right? So that's... He's I, a completely different man than he used to be. Yeah. I was, he, I was very afraid of this hire. Yeah. I was honest about that. And and now I'm just I'm just not. I've seen too many other great, great quote unquote coaches take jobs. And I thought and I believed in them too. Yeah. Thought they were incredible. And they don't scare me. Yeah. Mean, I'll tell you this, I'd have sold my soul for Tom Herman. And now I'll take my guy. I'll Makes take sense. my guy over Tom and we're gonna find out in in Texas. But I'll take my guy over them. They got they got better resources, better opportunities to recruit in the state of Texas, and and every advantage you could have, LSU has been better and and I think played better and grown in more areas than Texas has by far. I mean it makes sense. So makes sense. all right, let's move on. The Mississippi State Bulldogs. Eight and five last year, four and four in the conference. Uh Joe Moorhead's first year, well, they probably should have won more last year. I mean, they, they lost three guys in the first round of the NFL draft off their defense. Last year was supposed to be the dream season. Had Dan Mullen stayed, I think it might, it, it maybe would have. But we'll, we'll see. Either way. Uh, returning starters, six back on offense, three back on defense. That's not good. This team's going to look completely different. Returning experience, Number eighty-four in the country, number eight in the country or in the uh, conference. Um, seven and a half is the over/under. Over is minus one thirty. Under is plus one ten. Vegas thinks this team is more likely to hit eight wins than they are to hit seven. Joel Moorhead tried to make a square peg fit in a round hole with Nick Fitzgerald last year. He he absolutely should have won more games last year. Period. And there were there were a lot of games where they were just one possession games where if he had just done a little bit different to score a few more points than they, they would have won. Supposed to be an offensive guru. Yeah. Uh, quarterback Tommy Stevens transfers from Penn State, though. He's uh, he's comfortable in Moorhead's system, and he should beat out uh, Keaton Thompson. Running back Kylan Hill, three offensive linemen, and two starting wide receivers return. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's pretty the good. The offense is going to be a lot better. Yeah. Only three starters back for the number one total defense, number two scoring defense in the country. In the country. Uh, linebackers Errol Thompson and Leo Lewis return along with a ton of depth. Uh, defense, going to be weird. Uh, I would expect defensive coordinator Bob Shoup to kind of change his scheme this year. Um, you can't call the same defense without, like, Montez Sweat and Jeffrey Simmons. Like, you, you just you can't. That's right. Um, it's, Transcendent players you cannot yes, replace. Yes, so... Especially at a program like that. That's it. Like, it's like it's Al- like trying to replace Josh Allen at, at Kentucky. In Kentucky, yeah. So right. it's going to be different this year. I think the offense will be better. I think people have not had a chance to really catch up to what Joe Moorhead wants to do offensively because he hasn't done it yet. Like it, you were able to catch up to Nick Fitzgerald because he couldn't throw the ball to the right team. Like he, it, Fitzgerald is the prototypical running quarterback. That's what Mullen had him as. He didn't put him in positions. He, he threw to the fail. ball pretty damn well with Mullins. He absolutely did not. Yeah, he did. Absolutely did not. We talked about this last year. He was only about a fifty percent completion percentage. But and that's how many yards he, and how many touchdowns did he throw for? Because all of those things were pretty damn good. I don't care about the percentages because you don't take percentages to the bank. Uh, okay. You take points to the bank. I'm with you. But if you look at what Moorhead did with him, 
But that's because Moorhead's an idiot. I'm with you. But Mullen, even Mullen understood that you have to run with that kid. I, you well, can't okay. put him in a position to fail. That's right. And that's you, what Moorhead You have did. to be a... You, you have to coach the players you have. And Moorhead exactly. said, we're going to punt on this season. The most talented team that State may have ever had. Yeah. We're going to punt on it because yeah. the quarterback doesn't look the way I want him to look. No, you're he right. doesn't play the way I want him to play. If I was a State fan, I would have been pissed last year. Oh, yeah. Oh, and a lot of them were. Because uh, he, he, that was supposed to be the And all of a sudden, the answer is this year, well, everything's going to be fine. Because the offense is going to be a lot better. You know what? It is. And the defense is going to be a lot worse. Not, not because you're bad and not because anything's wrong with State, but because you just can't replace those guys. Yeah. You're not Alabama. You're not Clemson. You can't just lose top first-round talent. I have got State because Moorhead is able to recruit. Like, he has come in and recruited. He's brought talent. He's actually recruited better as far as rankings. And well, yeah, we'll but Dan, about player development. But Dan didn't recruit. I, I understand. I Dan understand. said, give me a two stars, give me a three stars. And I'll develop them. And I'll put them in the NFL. Moorhead has brought in more uh, more talent. That's right. Incoming. No, no, no and, question. Which is surprising for a guy from, you know, up in New York, right? So, and he was at Penn State, and he understood the Penn State, the Northeast area. He understood that. But he came down here, hired a bunch of guys that understand Southeastern he did, he, Conference. He did recruiting. what he needed to do, though, because yes. you got to do that. I've got him at eight and four. Okay. Um, I've got him losing to Auburn, Tennessee, Texas A&M, and Alabama. Uh, now, could they go seven and five? Could they go six and six? Absolutely. I think eight and four may be the ceiling. Um, although, I mean, I could see him winning at Tennessee because that's coming off of a bye week. It just depends on what Tennessee looks like at that point. Uh, I mean, the ceiling maybe is nine and three. I think the floor is six and six. I've got them right in the middle at eight and four. It wouldn't shock me to have them seven and five. I've got them seven and five. And that makes and, perfect and I'm a, sense. But I'm going to tell you one thing. There's one team we haven't got to yet. We'll get to them next. And Ole Miss is the team I have no earthly idea what to think of. Yep. I, have, I have no clue what to think of that team. If, if they roll off losses to Auburn, Tennessee, LSU, A&M, beat Arkansas, lose to Alabama. They go five out of six. Losing, this team could collapse. They could turn on Moorhead. And when the Egg Bowl comes around, I could easily see Ole Miss saying, this is our Super Bowl, and you guys are falling to pieces, chasing your tail. Yeah. Got them seven and five. I do think the floor is six and six. I'd be shocked if they were five and seven. All of my frustration with this team is because I think last year you had a chance to do be something special. really good. And then I just hate coaches, hate coaches that take over programs and then just punt on a season because these aren't my guys. Yeah. Especially when the other side of the team is so good and so ready. If you just don't screw it up, yeah. you could do something really special. Still did something special in, in the grand scheme of how the team went and season went, but it could have been so much more. It, it could have been significantly more. I mean, they, they should And he's the only person that solely has to wear that record. Yes. He has to wear that. Yeah. And now all you got to do is go out and uh, find a way to to get the best team in Mississippi State history. Like, But now you got to build it. But now you got to build it. And that's, that's the thing. Maybe he it, obviously he didn't know what to do with them last year. All right. The Ole Miss Rebels. Five and seven last year. One and seven in the conference. Returning starters, they've got three on offense, which is what this entire team was built around last year. They've got eight back on defense. Experience returning is number 106 in the country, number 12 in the conference. They're over under, at least at Caesars, back a couple of months ago, whatever it was, when the line came out, was four and a half. The over was minus 170. The under was plus 150. So Vegas thought it was much more likely that they hit five wins as opposed to like four or three. Head coach Matt Luke, 11-13 and 13 in two years. He brought in offensive coordinator Rich Rodriguez and defensive coordinator Mike McIntyre, two basically head coaches. Um, like two they good both, head they coaches, both, too. They both like got I, released from their jobs. but mm, it, One of them a little different circumstance than the other. Yes, very much Rich, so. Rich Rod's never been fired. Okay. Oh, no, he got, he well, was he got fired, fired, but yeah. it, was, well, th- it wasn't not for because coaching. of... Yeah, it wasn't because of coaching. We'll say that. We'll say we're not going to go any further than that. Uh, the depth is this year's problem. 
right? Uh, the entire offense is inexperienced talent. Wide receiver Elijah Moore. Lost a lot of talent to the NFL. Oh, yes. Uh, Elijah Moore needs to step up at wide receiver, um, and I, I, sus- I suspect that he will. Yep. Quarterback Matt Corral should uh, should fit Rich Rod's scheme pretty well. He can run and he can throw. He's a pretty accurate passer. Uh, he's looked good in practice. He looked pretty good in, in some relief spots last year. He obviously redshirted last year. Um, defense has more experience, uh, but way less playmakers than the offense. They were number 113 in scoring defense, number 127. Uh, or no, 121. Sorry, I can't even read my own right now. Total uh, offense. Mike McIntyre is installing a 3-4 scheme. Uh, I don't know if the personnel fits for them. Uh, the offense is going to lean on quarterback Corral and running back Scotty Phillips. Now, Scotty Phillips could be overtaken. We'll see. They had talent the last two years, but replacing all of that offensive talent with these NCAA probation sanctioned recruiting classes is where the problem comes in because where you had, you know, some four and five star guys before you're replacing those guys with like two and like upper end three star guys. It's tough. You're, you're starting to feel the effects of Hugh being gone, who was an exceptional recruiter Yes, and the lack of scholarship and, and, and the, yeah, the probation penalties. This yep. is where it starts hurting. It's never year one. No, it's it's long term. And look, I, I think Ole Miss still has some talent. I, I think that Corral can be really good. Uh, I've got them at five and seven. I've got them two and six in the conference. Uh, you know, I think they lose at Memphis week one. But I think they beat you, Arkansas. You think they beat Cal, though? Yes, I think, they, uh, I think they beat Arkansas, beat Southeastern Louisiana, beat Cal. I think they beat Vanderbilt. I think they beat New Mexico State, and I think that's it. So we're, we're, we're similar there. I think Cal might get them. It wouldn't surprise me. What, uh, what have you got? Four and eight here. Four and eight. and okay. here's my, here's my thing. This is the one team I don't know anything about because yeah. I, I really like their coordinators. Yeah. I really I mean, like the coordinators, but, but how is that dynamic going to work with, uh, with their coach? Right. I don't know I mean, that. that don't that's the clue. issue. Like it does Matt Luke just, he's the CEO and he just lets them do whatever they want to, or does he step in when something's not going exactly right? I got and, no idea. And then it becomes a clash of, this is my offense, you know, get out of here, or this is my defense, get out of here. Like, those two guys are used to being head coaches. They're being in charge. And now... I also see both of them competing for, as soon as this probationary thing is over with, Matt, they want Luke, to take over the Matt Luke has sat in this seat for a while, and he's an old Miss guy that got us through, but if I do really well on my side of the ball, I can, I can take the big chair again. And and so that's something else that I think is is a part of this, which could end up turning the, into yes. a just a complete collapse from within, or or it could could like work push, out really it, well. Yeah, it could push everybody like, to. Be I was better. just about to say if both of them are just bringing just a less competition, even though they don't have the talent. Hey, man, Rich Rod's been known to to uh, develop some kids. develop kids, and same thing with McIntyre. I mean that. They could be the surprise team of the SEC. I don't know what that means. Does that mean they go six and six surprise team? I think six or, and six is. I mean, remember they're the over under is uh, four and a half. That's right. So and the oh, over, no, no, no. The I'm over not, is minus. When I say it's a surprise, it's a surprise. I mean, uh, well, but the over yeah. is like minus one seventy. So the juice is pretty high there. They think yeah. they're going to go over four and a half wins. Like six and six, I don't think would surprise me. I think you know you go seven and five, eight and four. Like then you're going okay. This was a masterful That's coaching right. job, but who do you give the credit to? Like, well, it's, therein lies the problem. If they both do really well, do you did, give the credit did, to did, Coach did, Luke did, for did staying Matt, out of the did, way? Does Matt does Matt Luke get the credit for it? And then both of them are thinking, ah, oh, shit. That's you know? the, yeah. That's what, the issue. What happened? Uh, who knows? All right, let's uh, let's wrap this up. Last one: the Texas A and M Aggies. Nine and four last year, five and three in Jimbo Fisher's first season. Returning starters, they got seven coming back on offense, four on defense. Experience returning, they're number 97 in the country, number 10 in the conference. Over under is seven and a half. Over is minus 115 for the juice, minus 105 for the under. Head coach Jimbo Fisher, 92 and 27 as a head coach over nine years. He won the first bowl game in four years and beat LSU for the first time since AM joined the SEC in 2012. That game still pisses me off. <laughs> offensive coordinator Daryl Dickey returns quarterback Kellen Mond. Four out of five offensive linemen, a ton of skill experience. 
They lose tight end uh, Sternberger and running back Travion Williams. Uh, defensive coordinator Mike Elko, he gets back uh, defensive tackle Justin Matabuki, who I had to research how to say that name last night. I had heard it so many times last year. It's been so long in the offseason, but Matabuki. Uh, and he's fantastic. I mean, no. he's other-world type talent. This team's um, got some talent. But that's that's it for the front seven as far as returning experience because he's the only one. Other than that, you got three out of four back in the secondary. They were the number three run defense last year, number 32 total defense. Uh, they had 37 sacks and 100 tackles for loss. They were top 15 in both categories. 2020 is the year, right? Like in 2019, because of the schedule, because of the lack of experience on defense and whatnot, uh, you're going to get back basically everybody um, next year. They've got zero senior starters on offense. They have got only one senior starter on defense. The schedule is brutal. They do have a lot of talent. I think next year is the year that they're, it's a, it's a, it'll be a, senior, a very upperclassman-led team in 2020. This year, though, I, like it would not shock me whatsoever to see this team go 9-3. and three. I've got them 8-4, and four, uh, but that's all of the losses that you would expect, right? At Clemson, Alabama, at Georgia, at LSU, I've got them beating everybody else. So, But you don't have them beating a single team that they would be even with or a little bit dog. I've got them beating Auburn and Mississippi State, but they're better than Mississippi they're, State. They're better like, than that. uh, that's, that's who I've got them beating, and I've got them beating South Carolina. Um, that's, that's not even either. But I, I, don't think, I don't think they beat Alabama. I'm not picking an upset here because I think, I think their defense is going to hold them back a little bit. They're still talented. Just they're, they didn't no, start still, last year. They're still talented. I'm with you, but I mean, and that this is this is my prediction. That's right. I've got them eight and four, but I think as far as talent goes, this is a a top fifteen team in the country. But the schedule is absolutely brutal. I got them ten and two, and I think they could easily be eleven and one. As you you are a firm believer, huh? I, I really like this team. I think Jimbo's a really good coach. Oh yeah, I agree with that. A really good coach. I, agree I think with he's that. got a really good team. Uh, my, my their father, schedule their my schedule is believes. brutal. Yeah, my 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 dad thinks the same thing. He said, "I think they might beat Alabama. I think they might go in and beat Clemson." Having I, Bama at home is 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 really good for them. Oh yeah, I agree. I so, agree. Having to go on the road at Georgia at LSU. I think they lose one of those games, definitely. I don't know that they beat both of them. You think they beat Clemson? I would love to see it. But we'll see. I, I don't have right. that. I don't have that. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just tough. That's going on the road. Like, that'll be the biggest game. I got Clemson 11-1, and one, but I got no idea where that loss is coming yeah. from. There I just I just don't like giving teams undefeated. I just... No, it makes sense. It makes sense. All right. So that's going to wrap everything up. Of 130. Course, 130 teams. We have knocked them all out. I'm Good out. gracious. All right. Of course, go and check out all the other previews. Uh, we will have a ton more stuff. We're going to work on NFL going forward. We're also going to be doing our college football picks, our previews, everything else going forward. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're on Apple Podcasts, hit that subscribe button. Leave us some comments. Leave us some reviews. Share the show out. We do appreciate all of you guys tuning in. We will see you again very soon. Go to tunicatravel.com. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Thank you. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.